There are a lot of mixed messages available on marijuana use, its harms, and legalization. Determining fact from fiction is not always easy. This video is part of an ATTC Network Coordinating Office multimedia package to provide you with straightforward, accurate information and resources from leading scientists and trusted sources to enhance how you address marijuana issues in your work. This first video focuses on the effects that marijuana has on the body. My name is Wilson Compton, and I'm a physician and the deputy director at the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Well, it's essential that counselors be up to date about the effects of all drugs of abuse, but lately marijuana has been in the news so much because of the shifting policy and legal environment. So we're seeing a shift in the legal status of marijuana in many states with the onset first of medical marijuana, decriminalization, and now complete legalization for commercial sales in a number of states. And that really is shifting the dialogue for everyone involved in healthcare that might run across patients who are curious and, and may be involved. The other reason that we are so uh, uh, concerned about marijuana, is and it's been in the public eye, is because of the shifting policy and legal environment for marijuana. We saw that uh, medical marijuana was legalized starting in the mid-90s. We've had decriminalization of marijuana for quite some time in some locations. And then most recently, we've seen the full legalization for commercial sales in a number of states. So this certainly heightens the interest among all healthcare providers in marijuana-related issues. When we think about the effects of marijuana, we should consider both short-term effects and then the long-term effects. Short-term, of course, would be the immediate acute effects of intoxication. So what happens when people first use marijuana? Well, they may become giddy, lightheaded, not think as clearly. They may become uncoordinated. So going along with that, they may be more likely to have accidents, more likely to be confused. Some people will have frank psychiatric symptoms. They may become extremely anxious, and in some cases, they can even become psychotic, where they may hear things or see things that aren't real. Those are some of the most important immediate acute effects of marijuana. Well, certainly when we think about longer term effects of marijuana, we become uh, particularly concerned about what's the impact on the central nervous system on the brain or in other parts of the body. When we think about the brain effects, we might start uh, with the relationship to psychiatric symptoms to the onset of depression. There's a suggestion that marijuana may be related to higher rates of depression and anxiety disorders. There's certainly a suggestion that marijuana use in adolescence may be related to an earlier and more severe onset of psychosis. So these are very worrisome things. Marijuana has its effects on the brain in multiple ways. Most importantly, we need to realize that marijuana contains many chemicals in this plant that is smoked and inhaled through the lungs. So from the lungs, it gets into the circulation, and then it's transmitted from the blood vessels and from our, our, our bloodstream into the central nervous system. There are then receptors. There are parts of the brain that are naturally there that have receptors, so uh, uh, areas of the brain where the marijuana chemicals can exert their activity. These exist in many parts of the brain, uh, but we see uh, that in marijuana users, there are significant changes and differences in certain parts of the brain that you don't see in the non-marijuana users. So we see reductions in size in the hippocampus or the amygdala. These are regions of the brain that are important for memory formation and emotional regulation. So perhaps this explains or helps us understand why memory might be impaired in people who use marijuana or emotions might be dysregulated because those parts of the brain seem to be different in heavy marijuana smokers. That's just one example of how clinical neuroscience is beginning to teach us about the impact of marijuana on, on the brain. Uh, we certainly are concerned that marijuana is related to uh, exacerbation of breathing problems for people with asthma it can be quite uh, uh, risky. It's not associated, as far as we can tell, with a major risk for lung cancer. And that seems curious to me as a clinician. Uh, but so far, we don't find evidence that it does produce lung cancer. It can produce a short-term change in blood pressure and pulse, but it doesn't seem to be associated with a major risk for heart disease or, or, or heart, heart attacks. There's a question about how much are people exposed secondhand to marijuana? In other words, if somebody's smoking in a vehicle with them or in a small enclosed space, how much are they exposed to? Well, certainly there is toxicity and exposure. 
so that I would be concerned about people with breathing problems around anything that has to do with smoke. But it turns out we don't know that much about secondhand exposure, particularly with these newer, more potent types of marijuana. And so this is an area of active investigation and one worth, worth considering. When we think about marijuana in its current form, there have been some real changes in the last few, few years or decade or so, decade or two in the United States and all around the world. We see that the marijuana used today is much more potent than it used to be. This calls into question some of the research that was done 20 or 30 years ago on marijuana, that we may need to repeat some of that to understand whether today's higher potency marijuana has a different impact than it used to. We also see people taking it in different forms, but it turns out now we're seeing uh, use of edibles, we're seeing use of, of oil derivatives. Some of these can be extraordinarily potent. The dosages can be unpredictable. So the side effects, whether that's immediate poisonings and, in, and acute toxic effects or longer term consequences uh, are not well understood. At the National Institute on Drug Abuse, we have engaged in a vigorous process of research into the impact of the changing policy and legal environment. We think it's very important to understand that as society makes marijuana uh, more available, and reduces the consequences in terms of legal consequences for use and possession of marijuana, what's the impact on the population? What happens to driving under the influence? What happens to admissions to hospital emergency departments? What happens to access and use of these substances by adolescents? Even though these substances are never legal for people under age 18, we all know that the legal status doesn't keep it out of the hands of youth. And so we're very concerned and need to track and monitor what happens in these states that are legalizing it uh, 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 for vulnerable populations. Don't forget to check out the next video in the series, which discusses marijuana and its effect on youth and their families. If you have thoughts on this topic or would like to hear what others are saying, join the Network of Practice online discussion. Visit www.networkofpractice.org, create an account, and log on today. For more information, please visit the ATTC Network website, www.attcnetwork.org.